hey guys welcome or welcome back again to another juicy video how are you guys doing i know you are doing absolutely amazing just as i'm doing here in london today i have a high profile personality here on my youtube channel she's all the way from essex here in the united kingdom she migrated from nigeria to the uk as a biomedical scientist she went through the hcpc registration Today, I'm very privileged and super stuck to have with me here. She's going to be giving us details of how she migrated as a biomedical scientist from Nigeria into the United Kingdom without having to write IELTS. Yes, she didn't write IELTS. She went through another route. And so this is a success story today. She's here with us in the United Kingdom. And she's going to be giving us all the juicy tips and tricks and everything you need to know to migrate from your home country into the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist. Without much ado, guys, let's go right into the video. Today with me, I have a high-profile personality, the person of Olayinka. She's all the way from Nigeria as a biomedical scientist. This is a success story, guys. She did it. And today I've got her here to tell us the process that she used for the sake of those in Africa who have been asking about how to do this HCPC registration. So I've got a person who's got a success story. She's got a YouTube channel. So I'll let Olayinka introduce herself to my fans and then we can begin our interview. Okay, thank you for having me, Rebecca. Um, my name is Olaika Afalabi. I'm a biomedical scientist. Um, I work here in the United Kingdom. I work with the NHS, but I'm originally from Nigeria, like she said. And um, I came into the UK just about two months ago. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, I came in just about two months ago. I work in Essex, somewhere in Essex, that's where okay. I work. I have a YouTube channel. Oh, yes, yes. So she's got a YouTube channel. I'll leave the link to her channel in my description box, guys. If you have any further questions, as I always do, you can go onto her channel to, I mean, ask any questions. Feel free, follow her. We are here to guide you. That's the purpose of creating our YouTube channels. So I would like to ask, were you already a biomedical scientist from Nigeria before you moved in? Yes, I was. But then... um. The word biomedical scientist is, um, okay, let me say it this way. The profession itself is giving different titles depending on your country. In Nigeria, it's called, mostly in most places in Nigeria, it's called medical laboratory. You won't hear um, many people call themselves biomedical scientists. Most people, the title in Nigeria is medical laboratory scientist. But right. medical laboratory scientists hold um, bachelor's degree. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. And before you can actually register with the HCPC, which um, is the council that regulates um biomedical science profession and some other professions, you have to hold a bachelor's degree in medical laboratory science or biomedical science. Oh, right. So, so without the degree, you can't even do the registration at all. For biomedical scientists, no. Okay. You are you need to have a bachelor's degree at least. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how long have you been practicing back in Nigeria before you moved to the United Kingdom? So um, I, I did my internship in 2019. So I would officially yes. say my work 19. experience started from then. What is the process like? What's the first thing you have to do to register as a BMS? We'll use BMS for short. To register as a BMS from overseas into the United Kingdom. What's the first step? Okay, um, the first step is to get registered with the Health and Care Professions Council. That is like a regulatory body that governs um, the practice of biomedical scientists and some other professions. Okay, so what you need to do, actually, before you can get registered, you need to fulfill some criteria. Number one, you need to be sure that you're eligible. And what, what one of the things that makes you eligible as an international applicant, now the eligibility for people who studied in the United Kingdom is a bit different. There's a way the process goes. But if you studied outside the United Kingdom, your qualification is just for you to hold a bachelor's degree in either biomedical science, medical laboratory science. I think some countries call it medical laboratory technologies. So depending on the nomenclature, the mind is just that be, be sure that the nomenclature in your country is actually equivalent because I think some country call um, it medical laboratory technician, uh -huh. but you need to be sure that it is actually equivalent to what um, is expected of you. 
So once you are sure that you hold your degree, you need to, of course, have your proof of identification, um, your proof of address. You need um, you need to be licensed. You need your practicing license. Um, depending on where you are from, if you are from places like Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, some English speaking country, you don't need to have um, an English proficiency um, test. Okay. as its way because there's a section of the application that will tell you to like tick yes or no if the, if the question is is english your first language so if english is your first language like people from nigeria ghana and some other country you just tick yes mm -hmm. and with that you don't need to submit ielts or tofu mm -hmm. but if you are from other countries where english is not your first language or you were not taught in english then you need to like um Pro, um, submit a proof English test. Of, so with you, you didn't write any English test. Yeah, yeah, I didn't write any English test. And wow. jumping over to when I had to um, apply for visa, you know, you need an English proficiency test. All I did was to use ETIS, popularly called, formerly called NARIC. Right. So, so that was just all I did. But if you choose to, because it, it's actually more expensive though. But if you choose yeah. to like write an exam, you can. As long as it's the one acceptable by UKVI. But that is just for visa application, not for the HCPC registration now. Oh, right. Yeah, and um, you need to get your course information form from your school. That is just like, it's not the same as transcript. It's like a syllabus that contains everything you've done in school, including your clinical postings and all of that. With that, the HCPC will get to know that, okay, you, you are truly experienced or you, you have the theoretical knowledge. Now you need at least one year of um work experience, at least okay. one year. So if you are from, I, I don't know how it's, uh, it's operated in Ghana, but if you are from Nigeria, that means you can apply after your internship. Right. Yes, with, with just your internship experience, you can apply. Yeah. But then, but then bear it in mind that for people from Nigeria, you, the reason you will not be able to apply during your internship, number one, because you, you will most likely not have a year experience, yes. then you wouldn't get your um permanent license to practice mm -hmm. until after your internship. What you have during internship is just a provisional license. So then, yeah, so you need at least one year experience and some other little things that you get to know with time. Okay, so yeah, I'll try and get that link to the registration in my description box for those of you that will be interested. So after going through this application process, how long does it take to get a decision on your application? Okay, um, I would say this way. I did the old form of application um, before, um, until May 2022, the application process was done by post, like you gather your documents, then you send it to the HCPC, you send it to London by post. Yeah, by post. That was what yeah. it did. And it, it actually took me about five months. I sent my document in August 2021, and I got registered January 2022. But now um, it's been done online. You scan all your documents and uh, you, you forward it to them and all of that. And I've had people give testimonies of them getting registered within two, three months and all of that. But then I believe that if all things be equal, if there's no challenge with um, maybe um, contact with your council employer and all of that, um, I want to believe that you should be, um, the timeline should be, let's just give it the maximum. Mm. Or let me say within two to maybe five months at most, all things being equal. Yeah. It shouldn't get to five months because there's no issue of, but then it depends on how long your um your document stays with the assessors and all of that. And if you know some people when they submit their documents, they might be required to like submit more proof and all of that. Yeah. So the, the case is a bit different now. It, it gets faster. I learned that people are getting registered on time, but then just bear it in mind that um within two to five months you should get registered. All things being equal. Okay, so after you get registered, is there like a time lapse or like an expiry period for you to finish and come into the UK, or it is just till it's just left open? Okay, um, I would quickly flash back uh, for your registration to to take place. Apart from the document, you are going to be paying two fees: the scrutiny fee. The scrutiny fee is just like a fee you pay for them to like scrutinize 
your documents, your certification and all of that to be sure that you are truly eligible to be registered. Then after that, you'll be required to pay a registration fee, which um, for people that are registering for the first time, most most of the time you pay for two years registration fee. Um, It's like two cycles. They use the word cycle do. Mm-hmm. Once you get registered and you have your registration number, mm-hmm. you can start applying for jobs. Wow. Yes. Wow. So that brings me to the next question. So how did you go about finding the job? Which website did you use and like how did you go about the whole process of getting a job? Yeah, for, for the website, I made use of track jobs and um, NHS jobs. I also used Indeed, but my job um, application was through tracks. Although sometimes I get confused that was it NHS or tracks, but they are very finished, similar. Yeah, yeah. I finished um, all my application process after getting my offer was completed on tracks. But I really can't remember when exactly I applied on tracks. You can also um, look for, um, find jobs on LinkedIn. But like I said, most of those jobs are still linked to mm. track jobs. Right. And indeed, yes. So um, I started applying um, actively around February. Yeah. I started applying. You know, I said I got registered in January. Towards the end of January, that was when I got registered. But I had to like work on my application and all of that. So mm-hmm. I started applying, although I got so many, unfortunately, and um, to the glory of God, <laughs> I eventually got an invite in me. And that, as, that is my only invite to date. So, um, and that, that was the only interview I did. And thank God it worked out. So. And they gave you sponsorship, isn't it? Yes, they, they did. They did. Wow. They gave me wow. <laughs> sponsorship. So what is your, your job role like now coming to the United Kingdom? What do you typically do briefly on a day when you go to work? What is entailed? Okay, when I go to work, um, okay, um, maybe biomedical scientists will understand the language more, but when I get to work, we, we do something called housekeeping, like or maintenance. You kind of um, check up. Firstly, you might need to print out a list of pending samples maybe samples from yesterday like to check up the list try to like fish out the sample if they need to be run maybe it's, it's been done but the result is not reflecting work yeah. on that you maintain the analyzers because you can't keep using those analyzers let me just use the word machine mm-hmm. or equipment you need to be sure that they are producing the right results so you maintain them you run your controls or let me say i run my co- i run the controls if i have to I do that. Sometimes it might not be me, it might be, it might be another person. And before, before really working, you need to like clean your bench. You need to be sure that everywhere is sterile as much as possible. Then once sample stop uh, starts coming in, you start um, loading sample. Although I'm still in training in some phases, like uh, I'll keep on, you know, like they can't train me on, on every procedure just at once, you understand. But mm. I've been doing a bit of yeah. this and a bit, bit of that. So it's been fun. It's been fun. But, you know, there's a lot of IT. The technology is different here. You need yes. to know a lot of password. You keep on going to the computer to do this and that. So what is the salary like? Not like per month. What is the per annum salary like for somebody maybe who is planning to come? They want to know if the money is going to be enough or something. What is the okay. annual salary like? Or if you don't mind, like an average per month? Average. Yeah, Um. it depends on your band. For us, I've seen people come in as band five and band six. So you are not limited to like band five rules. Although I came in as a wow. band five uh, medical scientist, but I've, I've, I've met with people and I've heard of people who came in as band six biomedical scientists. So... Um, the salary scale is actually online. For for band fives is 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 between I think twenty seven thousand to about um thirty two thousand. Okay. There there are some figures on it. I I really can't even remember myself. Yeah. So you are per annum, and if you are coming in newly, especially from Nigeria, most likely you might be paid on the lower limit of your band. Yes. Either your band five, you might get paid on the lower. Starting point, the advances may get, or depending on whatever the arrangement is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm being paid on the lower 
um but and if i oh, actually if i want to like do more work i can take extra shifts yeah then because and every I year work, also is increased isn't it yes yes so how is it like would you advise somebody back home to make this move if they are planning to come to the united kingdom is it a good move yeah it is um it is number one especially if you are coming to work in your exact profession it's because it's actually a step higher and you get to like personally i've always desired to practice in in a world-class facility yeah. it, it has been my desire to just see biomedical science or medical laboratory science beyond um my level of exposure back in uh, nigeria mm -hmm. so it's it's a, it's a move that i would always advise anyone to take and if you are for for any reason coming up to take a job that is not your original profession so for the for the fact that you are coming to a new system and for example i'm sorry to just um job for for example people coming to do healthcare assistant jobs like we are either brothers or sisters to someone or like you caring for people is something that is a part of our life so i, I feel like it's is a great move. It's just that you might just try to like make your plan B to see if you want to go back to your profession. And there are some people that they always wanted to be in the healthcare system, but yeah. for some reasons they didn't study it in school. So it's a big opportunity to just come into the system. And I would always advise if you, you can go for it. Might not be UK though, but if you really want to relocate, make your move, go for it, and you you definitely will not regret it. Yeah. Like I'm not regretting, trusting God, I won't regret it. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. Any final yeah. words for my viewers? Anything you'd like to tell them? Um, okay. Uh, first I will tell you keep on supporting Rebecca and um just have it at the back of your mind that it is possible. Some of us back home, like for example, this time last year, it was still looking like I was still back in Nigeria, still expecting my UCPC registration and all of that. But I kept on seeing myself in UK. One of the things I did back then, I was always just watching. I don't know how I didn't come across your channel, though, but I was always watching. I think I only came across your channel when I got here. I was always watching videos from people in the UK. And really, it's a reality now. Like, just believe that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And try as much as possible to be, to use the resources you are, you, are, you have online and don't get scammed. Be beware of scammer. True. Um, there are so many resources that you can always go to the official website of um, UK or whichever country you want to go to and just believe that it is possible. And yeah, you get, you get to your destination eventually. Wow. Thank you very much for your kind words. And yes, okay. don't give up for your jackpot. Your jackpot, my uh, dreams. <laughs> don't give up on it. Still pursue it with God on your side, determination, hard work, consistency, and focus. You will definitely make it. I think we'll draw an end to this video. I'll leave the link to uh, Olaike's channel in my description yes. box and everywhere please go and follow her so that i can ask questions about the whole process she's got a lot of videos explaining into details all that we've said here she's gone a step ahead to explain each and every step into very much um detail so you can go there and have all your questions answered with this being said we'll draw a curtain to today's interview and until we meet again in our next video guys is bye thank you bye